Hello and welcome to a new video. I'm Philip Hartenfeller and in this series I want to teach you JavaScript for Apex. If you come from a more of a back um, and more database context and have not yet much JavaScript experience. So let's get started. So I don't want to bombard you with much theory. We're going to learn by doing. So I'm preparing examples to, to learn JavaScript. And I'm starting with a really simple one. And this is just adding two numbers. And yeah, the catch is that uh, these numbers are in just Apex page items. So we have two inputs and button, and then the numbers should get added up and put back into the result field. So how do we do this? First step would be like storing each value in a variable. What I'm doing here is opening my browser dev tools. Right click inspect or you can use a keyboard shortcut for that. And then we have this console section. This is your friend for debugging and developing JavaScript. In the end, we're going to put this JavaScript into another place in Apex, but for now, this is perfectly fine. This is like an environment where I can enter and run JavaScript. So it's really nice to test things out and show what's going on. So first things first, we need these numbers. And I would say it makes sense to store them in a variable. How can we define a variable? We can just type let and then my variable name, so let num1 equal, and that's why it's called let, and three, for example. That's my number one variable, so if I just type it again and enter, you can see it's three. I can, okay. You probably also see var in some places instead of let. That's also fine, just the details are different, but I would recommend just using let for everything. So actually like this is one, not three. So we need to get the value from this. And for this, we have actually um, an interface for an Apex where we can just get that value. So it's the field is num1. So in the page designer, it's also called p2 num1. What we can do is we can just use Apex, sorry apex dot items dot p2 and then you can see it's going to uh, already give me some values here and basically the page items on the page so i can use p2 num1 tab and then we can again use dot and then see all lot of things what we want is get value And then this is a function. So now we need to call it by using uh, brackets. Okay, you can see function returned one. So now num1 is one. But as you can see here now, and this is a basically a, a trapdoor in Apex, is here this is purple and this is blue. Why is it blue? It has also these quotes. It's actually a string. So we can do type of num1 and it says, okay, it's a string. JavaScript is dynamically typed. So we don't like in PSQL define a variable. I didn't have to put a number in here. And that means also like I can change the type. So this was the number three, it's now the string one. So I changed the type of this variable. And the issue with strings is we can't calculate with strings. So for example, the issue everybody tends to make one time is um, if you add like a two to it, it becomes 12, which doesn't make sense. But the issue is plus is not only the numerical plus operator, it's also string concatenation. So we just concatenate one and two, and that's the string 12. Okay, so we did something wrong here. What's the better way? We have two ways we can first like um, we can use number.parse float or parse int based on the type and use num1. Then we get this as a number value or even better because Apex has our back. So if I go use my arrow keys to later statements here, this is the way we retrieve the value. And instead of using get value, there's also a get native value. And then we 
automatically get this as a number. And the thing is like Apex knows this is a number, a number field. This won't work on the text field. Automatically convert that for you. The thing is the DOM, the, the website, the inputs are not like typed in a way. It's like a value for the website is always a, a string. So we have uh, num1, we can do the same with num2, apex.items.p2 num2 dot get native value. And I actually forget like this first time I store something in num2, so I have to declare the variable, variable with let. Okay, now we have both. Great, now we could add them. So num1 plus num2 and it's three as we want it. So let's actually store that in a result. So let result equals num1 plus num2. So we have it in a variable, we can use it later on. And now the value should be put into this result field. So how we can we write a value to an item? That's also fairly easy. It's similar, instead of storing it in a variable, we want to write something so we can directly call apex.items again. Then we're going to choose the result item, the third one. And then there is a set value next to get value. And then we're just going to pass our result item. And voila, that's it. That's how the logic, how we can like add this addition. Okay, now the issue is we, we just put a lot of things in our console, it's already flooded. Um, other users should, of course, don't put these things in the console. How can we tie the button to this action? Now we do native Apex again. So we just have this button, we can add a dynamic action to it, addition. And then here on the action, we change that to execute JavaScript code. Open the editor here. Then we can copy our, our things. So, uh, so let num1 equals apex items p2 num1 get native value. And I'm going to type out the next one, apex. And you can see here, you also get these hints. So items, be careful of using the S here. Otherwise you don't get these hints p2 num2 and again get native value let result equals num1 plus num2 and in the end what we're going to do is apex.items dot p2 result dot set value result so let's run the page can close the console here. Five plus three equals eight. Perfect, I can change it and get something else in here. Can even do five to five and it does floating point numbers correctly. What's next? So this is pretty easy, but like it would be cool if it would like automatically update this when I, when I change the value in here. So for that to work, um, we can like first take our code here, that's perfectly nice, and we, we can store it in a function that we can reuse. So I go onto the page in here, and here's this JavaScript section, and here's a function global variable declaration. We can paste our code in here, then we have to wrap it in a function, so we just say function add numbers, that's our name, and we have parentheses here. We could define parameters, but we won't need some here, because we get everything from inside it. And then we just wrap it in the curly braces. Now it's, if we just run again the page, and we open our console again, and I just change something, we can see that we can call it from here, and it does already the action. So again, updates the field, great. So it would make sense to change our add button to also just call it, add numbers, semicolons are optional, but we it's nicer to just add them. And at last, 
what we're going to do is create a dynamic action on the num item, add, and then we also add the second one. So if we change any of these items, we're just going to call our function. Okay. And let's see if it works, 31. Okay, it doesn't do it yet because I'm still in the input field. If I move out of it, you can see it changing. Yeah, and that's already it. So with just a few lines of JavaScript, we are able to extract values from our input fields, from our page items, and we can write them in some others. That's a fairly basic, easy example. You can like play around with this. You could of course do other things like you can add something that multiplies, divides, you can count letters or anything. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you have some feedback, some questions, let me know in the comments and see you in the next video. Bye bye. Thank you.